Hey, Larkin Rose here, and I want you to tell me what is so bad about Nazis. It's not actually a rhetorical question. I actually want real answers to this. What is so bad about Nazis? Now, most people, ignorant of history and philosophy, the best they could come up with is, well, they killed a bunch of people. Yeah, and that's pretty bad. That's something they did. But when the National Socialist Party was running for office in Germany and getting elected, their platform was not put us into power and we'll kill a bunch of people. Nobody ever has that platform because nobody would ever win. Now, I, I could also have titled this video, What's So Bad About Communists? Um, or Communism, either way. Because it's actually the same answer for the same reason. The reason I ask the question is most people, they, they have these terms in their heads like Nazi or communist, and they have sort of this vague idea that there's something bad, but they don't know what. And if you ask them, well, what was actually the fundamental flaw, the fundamental problem with Nazism, they have no idea. In fact, if you ask them, can you even describe or define the philosophy, they have no clue. Well, it was some bad German people. Well, it had nothing to do with them being German. It wasn't because they used a swastika. You're bad if you use a swastika. There was something fundamentally evil about the philosophy behind it, which is why it led to that. And it's the same fundamentally evil problem behind communism and socialism, where when that becomes, uh, gets implemented into politics and gets hold of government, lots of people die. Again, when Mao <laughs> wanted power, when Stalin wanted power, Lenin, go down the list. None of them said, if you put me into power, I'm going to kill a whole bunch of people. They did. That was the end result. But all of them, when they were vying for power, they said, I'm going to fight for truth and justice. I'm going to defend our country from its enemies. I'm going to make us strong and independent and fight for good and righteousness and yada, yada, yada. And then a bunch of people died. And a bunch of people were oppressed. And there were wars and all sorts of fun stuff. But if people just think, well, if you use the name Nazi, then you're bad. Or if you use the name communist, and they don't understand why it led to what it led to, then all the tyrants have to do is pick a different name. Stick a different name on the same thing, repackage it with a different label, and people will go rah, rah, rah again. Because if you look at the film clips of the, the cheering, adoring, thrilled crowds cheering for Mao Zedong or Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler, they were thrilled to death. They thought, finally, we're going to have the country we should have, rah, rah, rah. And then millions of people died. It wasn't that the people said, all right, all you evil people put me into power. It was they tricked good people into putting them into power. So I really want people to tell me what is so bad about Nazism or what is so bad about communism. Now the funny thing is people often categorize those as far right and far left when they're the same thing. First of all, Nazi is short for the National Socialist Party. And if you ask me, the difference between socialism and communism is the order of words used to define it. It's the same fundamental idea. I will tell you what's so wrong about Nazism. I will tell you what's so wrong about communism and see if you can recognize that most Americans still believe in the fundamental flaw and still cheer for the exact same bad idea that Hitler proposed, that Mao proposed, that Stalin proposed. The evil underlying Nazism is collectivism. It is the idea that the rights of the individual can and should be sacrificed in the name of the common good or the country, or the nation, or the people, or whatever bogus term you want to use to justify the oppression of an individual in the name of a greater good. That was the evil behind Nazism. And if you accept that premise, most of Nazism makes perfect sense. If you accept that one human being's suffering is okay, is allowable, if the greater number of people get a reward and, and do better, then you should be waving a swastika or waving the hammer and sickle and going rah, 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 hooray for oppression. Because that is the fundamental principle behind all authoritarian collectivism. It doesn't matter what name you stick on it. 
The idea that the greater good makes the individual's rights not matter is the entire problem. And if you accept that idea, it makes perfect sense to slaughter the weak. Hey, we have a hundred people, five of them are kind of weak and sickly and it takes lots of money to take care of them. Now, you can either be an individualist anarchist who says those sick people own themselves, you don't get to kill them because you're, they're inconvenient, or you could take the authoritarian collectivist view that, well, the greater good will be served by killing them. Or a more common familiar thing that Democrats in this country love to cheer for is, that guy has so much money, if only we took all his money and gave it to us, that would serve the greater good. And more of us would have money. Yeah, he would suffer, that one guy, but who cares about him? He has a bunch of money. It's okay to sacrifice his rights in the name of the common good and the common people and the downtrodden and the yada, 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 yada. It's the Obama pitch, it's the Clinton pitch, it's the general political leftist pitch. It's also the pitch of Stalin and Lenin and Mao and Hitler. They all said there are these few rich, evil, nasty people that we should victimize for the rest of us to make our country strong and to, to, to defend us against these evil, nasty people. Oh, incidentally, most of those tyrants, uh, absolutely including Hitler, could point out genuine evils that they said they were going to fight against. The, the banking institutions, which are still being, doing evil crap in this country today, were doing evil crap to, to Germany. And the, the Treaty of Versailles was a huge injustice. They had very real injustices to complain about. Same with Mao, same with Stalin. But their solution was collectivism. Let's get an authoritarian state that will decide which individuals get to keep stuff, which individuals get to have rights, and what is for the common good. Which They always call it the People's Republic of this and that. And the other thing to talk is if we're, we're just representing you, and in the name of the people as a whole, we have to have the right to tax individuals and control individuals and limit your choices and, and, and do surveillance and all sorts of bogus stuff. That is what always leads to tyranny. And the reason it works is because it's a great way to trick good people into supporting evil. Because if you came right out and said, hi, I want to do a bunch of evil stuff, please put me in office, nobody would vote for you. But if you come out and say, I'm for the common good, the common man, the, the, the greater good of the most number of people, then people can feel good about putting tyrants into power, which has happened over and over and over again. So what's wrong with Nazism is the same thing that's wrong with communism and socialism and the United States Constitution. They all pretend that political power, the violence of the state, is justified if it serves the general welfare, the common good, the people as a whole. Now, the degree of violence against the individual described in the Constitution is a lot smaller than most of those other tyrannies did right off the bat. We get to steal everything and then divvy out food and money in a, a nice, fair, noble way. So the Constitution was a limited form of collectivism. But getting back to the Nazis, I want to know how many people want to stand up and say this. There, there actually are some people, which is pretty sad. But aside from complete buffoon idiots, how many people want to stand up and say, well, okay, Nazism led to a whole bunch of nasty things, but it wasn't because the idea was bad. It just somehow went awry. People didn't do it right. But yeah, we should certainly try it again. I mean, you don't just throw out the idea just because it slaughtered a few million people the first time. Come on, we, just, we, can, we can try, we can improve on it, but you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Let's try Nazism again. Not very many people will say that. A hell of a lot of people will point to the U.S. Constitution and say, well, yeah, the first time it around, it did create the most powerful authoritarian empire the world has ever known with the biggest war machine in history, the biggest extortion racket in the world ever. But let's try it again. No, let's not because in the Constitution was still the seed of authoritarian collectivism. That's why it led here. No, it's not what the founders said was going to happen. It's not what they predicted. It's not the sales pitch they gave when they were trying to push the Constitution through. Just like what happened in Nazi Germany is not what Hitler said, here's what I'm going to do. What happened in Red China was not what Mao said, here's what I'm going to do. Soviet Russia. Stalin and Lenin did not say, we're going to oppress a hell of a lot of people, can we please have some power? They all said, this is for the common good, this is to help the good people, to defend against our enemies, to make the country strong. Exactly the rhetoric 
that every megalomaniac always uses and the outcome is always the same. It can be different in degree where it isn't 20 million people, it's only a million people murdered. It isn't this much extortion, it's that much extortion, but it is always the sacrifice of the individual in the name of collectivism, in the name of the common good and the collective. The problem is still there, and whether you call it Nazism or communism or a constitutional republic, it's always the same. Oh, by the way, on a final note, most Americans still don't know this, and uh, I should admit, I didn't know it until just a few years ago. Red China was a constitutional republic with a Bill of Rights. Soviet Union was a constitutional republic with a Bill of Rights. The Weimar Republic, which turned into Nazi Germany, was a democratic republican, uh, or constitutional republic with a Bill of Rights. North Korea, it's still a democratic constitutional republic with a Bill of Rights. So if you think a piece of paper saying, be nice to people, is going to stop the evil power of collectivism, the reason Nazism led to what it led to, the reason communism led to what it led to. If you really want to try that over and over again and say, don't worry, next time it won't do that, then you're exactly who I want, giving me an answer, what's so bad about Nazism? Because when you actually understand that, you'll realize the question is, what's so bad about the idea of government? Figure that out, and you'll stop advocating authoritarian collectivism of any flavor, and then we can stop having war and oppression.